So the podcast, was it difficult? Did you pitch it to someone or did you just think, you know, we'll just make this and just put it out and and see what happens? So New Year's Eve on 2015, I just found out I was pregnant and uh, my friends were over and my friend Jamie, who was really into podcasts, kind of earlier than most people, was like, you've got to do a podcast. You're so nosy. You get secrets out of people. Do Mm -hmm. it. So it took a while for me to kind of think of the things. I didn't want it to be anything about music. Yeah. And I was like, well, what do I love? I love eating. Yeah. I love my mum. I love my mum's meals. My mum is really interesting. Maybe a guest wouldn't mind coming to my mum's house and my mum cook us dinner and we just talk. Because I think I'd been watching the trip. Yeah. And so initially I wanted to go to really nice restaurants. And then I was like, oh, that may be noisy, logistics. And I was like, my mum's a bloody great cook. And it kind of, you know, the story kind of told itself then because it was like, oh, well, it's just like what mum always does. Like she just hosts. Mm. So I didn't actually think that my mum was going to have as big a role, weirdly. I kind of thought she wouldn't want to, but... uh, as we you know, no one wrong. puts Lenny in the corner. <laughs> exactly. People are queuing up, and I was on it. I was I had the good fortune to come on it a couple of years ago now, so I feel like I'm one of the kind of like the firsties. But what do you put it down to? Because you get so many great guests. Well, with our one, they get a meal. Yeah. And I think now it's kind of got this thing where PRs and publicists now, like we become like a go-to piece of press, which cracks me up. I mean, the fact that Dolly Parton had to do us and chat to us um, about, you know, uh, what were we talking about? Chicken dumplings. Anyway, it's so surreal, but I do think there's something that, I think it brings people back to, I mean, Firstly, they don't have to talk about what they're talking about the whole bloody time, which is either promoting whatever television show or album. So there's something that takes them away from that. So it's escape and it's nostalgia. And I think it takes them back to their childhood and that mem those memories and however simple and um and it's so beautiful. And I think everyone has food memories and family memories. And that combined really brings out it's um it really resonates with people. So very lucky. And do you think that your last album is as good as it is because of what uh, because of what's happened with the podcast? So the, so the pressure's off a little bit. Do you think that that lends itself to actually, you know, I can just focus on being creative? And yes, I've now I have this great piece of work that you know yeah. Obama's stuck on his playlist, which is the most incredible surreal moment That's for so you, cool. surely. So cool. I mean, Obama kickstarted this new bloody deluxe campaign. I mean, you know, Obama, when the bloody president of the United States, you know, says, hey, I like this song, they go, oh, well, maybe we'll make it a single. Okay. (laughs) Everyone should hire Obama for their, like, music PR. (laughs) 